This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, welcome to another video. Now, I know you guys are antsy and anxious to see the final boat video, but guess what? I'm not done with the boat yet. I'm in the doldrums of finishing. So until I finish that, I thought I'd do another video because something happened while I was finishing the boat. I had a lot of downtime in between coats. And it got me thinking about life, love, and tools that haven't been invented yet. And I came up with some pretty awesome tools that need to be invented immediately. So I'm gonna walk you through each tool that I think is a necessity and a must in every person's wood shop. I'm looking for investors, so if anybody wants to jump in on this on the ground floor, then send me a DM. All right, let's take a look at what I got. The following tools are actually terrible ideas and should not be attempted or recreated in any way. Bourbon Moth Woodworking is not responsible for any dumb tools made as a result of this video. <laughs> Pants. An invention as old as legs. So let me ask you this. How come pants have seen the same stupid pants for hundreds of thousands of years? Well, I'll tell you why. Because nobody used their noggin to try and think of a better way that pants can be used. I'm constantly walking around in the shop looking for some place to sit. Because I'm lazy. And then I thought, what if your pants that you're already wearing were a place to sit? How come no one's thought of this before? So I set out to invent stool pants. What? It's not that bad of an idea. Let's do it. The first thing you have to do in making any set of stool pants is to find a stool that you're already comfortable in sitting on. This is a stool I've had in my shop for some time and I like the way it feels on my backside. Next, you find a good comfortable position on top of the stool and just using a sharpie marker, you trace the outline of the stool onto your bottom. This will allow you to figure out exactly where you need to attach the pants to the stool to get a comfortable seat when you lean backwards to sit down. Next, I took the pants off, got them lined back up on the stool where they needed to be, and then just using some screws and a couple washers, I attached the pants to the stool. Nice and easy. No reason to overcomplicate things. And just like that, I had a beautiful pair of stool pants. Now, if I'm tired, all I have to do is just sit down. I thought I'd test out the stool pants, so I was walking around my shop a little bit and the UPS man stopped by. What's up? What are you doing? I invented stool pants. I guess so. You can sit down anywhere you want. Are you uh, glued to the bottom of your... Uh... No, I use screws. Did you really? Yeah. You want me to make you a pair? Uh, I'm good, thanks. Okay. He seemed less than impressed. He obviously doesn't know good design when he sees it. If you thought the stool pants were impressive, just wait. I've got a bunch more brilliant ideas. Let's go over to the lathe and take a look. The lathe is one of those tools that you either love or you hate. And I don't love it. And part of the reason is because it just takes so flippin' long. You gotta like get your thing on there and turn it and blah, 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 blah. And one of the things that takes so long is that you're constantly switching out different chisels. You're grabbing one to get it all round, then you're grabbing another one, then you're grabbing another one, and it just takes so much time. So I was thinking there might be a way to cut out some of that time and make the lathe a lot more fun. Double-sided chisels. You got a tool on both ends, and that way, you don't have to grab a new one. You just flip it around, boom. Let's see if we can make it happen. Like any design process, I started out pretty rudimentary. I simply took two chisels that I frequently used and figured out a way to hook them together. 
For this, I just used some blue painter's tape. More a proof of concept than anything else, but I had a start. So here's my first attempt at the double-sided lathe chisel. Now, you might be thinking, what an idiot, because you probably saw the mistake before I did and realized why this is a bad idea. I didn't realize until after I got them together. The problem is, it's too long. You gotta stand way back here to get to the lathe, and that's just too far away to get accurate control. But like any new invention, it's a process, so I'm not gonna give up. Let's try lathe chisel 2.0. Next, I decided to take things up a notch. So I grabbed two different chisels, and this time I decided to actually cut them down so that they'd be a little bit smaller so I could stand closer to the lathe. Now eventually I might figure out a cool way to join these together, but again, I'm just in the trial stages at this point. So I figured, heck, why not just super glue them together? I mean, that's gonna work, right? And then I decided to take things up one more notch and I wrapped a nice piece of leather around the inside of the two chisels to cover up the seam and give myself a nice grip. And that right there is why you should never give up on your dreams. I could have given up with the taped together one. Oh, it's too long. Boo hoo, it's not gonna work. Wrong. With a little ingenuity, I just cut down two existing chisels. I added a leather handle, you know, cause bespoken. And voila, now you've got a perfect chisel length that you can just get in there. And when you're done on one side, flip it around and you do the other side. Practically a perfect tool. Let's see what we can come up with next. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. One class that I recently took and thoroughly enjoyed was Find Your Style, five exercises to unlock your creative identity by Andy J. Pizza. Yeah, that's right. His name's Andy J. Pizza. That's flipping awesome. This idea of neurodiversity. If you've never heard that term, it just means that every brain is different. It's usually in reference to- There are literally thousands of different classes you can take, everything from illustration to photography to animation to marketing, something that actually really helped me with my new product line. Today we're going to be going over marketing elements. So uh, hopefully by now you've got a product, um, you've got a design conceived, you have it actually in your hands now, something that you can actually sell. But before the selling happens, what's really important is the marketing aspect. Of it. Skillshare is specifically curated for learning, meaning there's no ads and it's less than $10 a month for an annual membership. If that's not good enough, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Let's talk about sanding. Sanding's terrible, I hate it. But in today's market, it's an upsell to be able to say that a piece was hand sanded. Something about customers, they think it's more impressive when something's hand sanded. It just takes a long time. So I was thinking, is there a way that you could hand sand something without actually hand sanding something? There is, I'm gonna show you. This project started where all good woodworking projects start, at Walmart. I was on the hunt for a pair of hands that I could implement into some sort of machine to get that hand sanded effect. And <laughs> I think I found them. I purchased a couple middle of the line baby dolls and my plan was to simply do some surgery and remove their hands. I'm told these are inanimate objects, so don't get too worried. I'm sure they won't feel a thing. Next, I took the baby dolls over to my bandsaw and very carefully I removed each one of their arms. I did leave their legs intact because this is a hand sanding machine, not a foot sanding machine. This isn't some weird YouTube channel or anything. 
Next, I took all the hands and very carefully I just removed the little bits of clothing left behind by the previous operation. This left me with six arm-hand combinations that would perfectly integrate into my machine. Next, I cut a round disc out of 3 quarter inch plywood and I inserted a piece of lag bolt through the center with a nut on each side to hold it firmly in place. Next, I positioned the arms around the outside perimeter of that piece of plywood, making sure to alternate from left arm to right arm to left arm to right arm. We want to make sure that we cover all of our bases here and not leave any gaps where our piece of wood is going to be missed by the sanding portion of this. And that left me with this beautiful hand wheel. Next I had to cut some small pieces of sandpaper to fit in the small hands that were attached to my plywood wheel. So I cut out some baby sized pieces of sandpaper and then just using a little super glue and accelerator spray, I firmly glued a piece of sandpaper into each palm of each baby hand. After gluing all of the sandpaper in place, I inserted my apparatus into a drill so that it could spin freely, perfectly mimicking the shape and movement of the human hand. That was our goal after all. Well, there you have it. After a quick trip to Walmart, some baby hands, a piece of plywood, and a lag bolt, I got my very own hand sanding machine. All you gotta do is get your piece of wood. And unlike an ordinary sander, you can still advertise that your pieces are hand sanded. This will be available on my website if anybody wants it. Next, I wanna fix a problem as old as time. You're up on a ladder, you got a drill in one hand and a beer in the other hand, and you need both hands on the drill, what do you do with your beer? I'm going to take care of that. When I was at Walmart buying baby hands, I thought ahead for this project, and I bought this little bicycle cup holder. I'll have to cut that off later. Anyways, this is a super easy, quick and simple upgrade that anybody can do at any skill level. So all we're gonna do basically is take off this stupid thing that you hang the drill on your pants with and we're gonna replace it with a cup holder. But the problem is sometimes you're using a drill like this and sometimes you're using a drill like this. So we're gonna have to figure out a way that the cup holder can pivot depending on which angle you have the drill at. Because obviously, we don't want our beer to spill out all over the place when we're trying to drill in something. So let's see what we can do. The first thing I had to do was remove the existing clip on the drill. Now this is a clip that's used to hold the drill firmly on your pants, but if you had to decide between holding your drill on your pants and holding your beer on your drill, I think we'd all make the same decision. Next, I simply just screwed the cup holder back onto the drill to see what we were working with. I immediately noticed the problem was it couldn't spin freely to change the orientation of the beer. This would result in a lot of spilled beer and we probably wouldn't get any projects done as a result. So I took the cup holder off the drill, brought it over to my bench grinder, and I grinded off some of the back support pieces that were getting in the way of the cup holder spinning freely. After grinding a small amount off, I took the cup holder back over and I repositioned it onto the drill. Now it could spin both forward and backward with just a little effort, which is fine. We want the beer held firmly in place and we were in business. Boom. Now I could be wrong, but I feel like I've just changed the drill industry. Side mounted cup holder, which is great. If you're drilling straight forward, boom, beer, perfectly up and down, it's not gonna spill. But if you gotta drill with the drill angle down, all you gotta do is hold the cup holder like this, tilt it, boom, beer's still perfect. Oh, but what if you're laying on your back and you're drilling straight up? Not a problem. There's gonna be free plans for this on my website. So, I'm just joking, there's not. You just screw a cup holder onto the side of your drill. Well, there you have it. Just a few of the inventions that have been going through my brain 
the last couple weeks. And I'm happy to share them with you. We've got the hand sander. We got the drill beer holder. Double-sided chisel for the lathe. Pretty smart. And of course, stool pants. If you liked these and you want to be a part of my Kickstarter campaign, then let me know down in the comment section. And if I get enough people that I feel like are really behind these products, I'm going to start a Kickstarter and I'm going to make these happen because I feel like the world needs more innovative solutions to things like sanding.